Hits and Crits. What's up, Hits and Crits family? Welcome to the next Season 5 patch review. And today we're going to talk Baratheons. The mighty Baratheons, the defensive style faction. And uh, no other is here. Who else than our mod, Pasha, right? Welcome to have you. This is your first video, so maybe you say yes. one or two sentences about yourself and what you know, what you know, what what brought you here, right? Hi guys, uh, you already know my nickname. My real name is Pascal. I'm the moderator of the Baratheon channel and parts of the Hits and Crits team. And uh, for season four, I mostly played Baratheons, and now let's. Uh, See into the future of the Baratheons, what uh, the changes for S5 have bring, uh, will bring to them. Yeah. Yeah. Great to have you. And and, and I have heard in our pre-discussion, you already played some of the S5 changes. So let's see what, what, we, what we can show you guys. As always, we start with something um, um, to, to show you where does this faction come from? Where where were they in S4? And that being said, there was a huge change from S3 to S4. Um, you know, big, a lot of changes for Baratheons back, like back then when we got season four. And like most mm -hmm. no notable was was definitely the change on the kings and the queensmen. So the Stannis side got quite heavily like lifted on to being being a really like kind of aggressive but also on the queensmen they they get they got so tanky um at least as long as your opponent does not have the crown right so a lot of changes happened um and then we in the end of season uh four we got the crown land scouts um uh, uh, uh unit on top of it, which gave also a little bit like solved two 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 of the main problems that Baratheons had in season three, which was damage output and movement. Um, so they 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 kind of like compensate for it. So what's your yeah. view on the season four Baratheons? Where do where do we come from? So um, in season three, they weren't one of the top contenders, uh, no. even uh, even as a, maybe top five uh, top five. A top five uh, faction, but with the recent changes in S4, they definitely had a huge power spike thanks to the changes uh, yeah. that Kingsman um, got a lot more aggressive, a lot swinginger, and uh, definitely a higher damage output. And the changes to Queensmen make them a really solid commander bunker, a solid centerpiece of uh, many armies. And that pushed uh, Baratheons to one of the top three factions. If you can play them and if your enemy plays, like you want them to play. <laughs> as always. So, uh, as always. No, the, the biggest uh, weakness is still that if the enemy doesn't play like you want to play, you're going to lose. Yeah, and I would say, like, to summarize it, what what what, what really what really hurts the Baratheon faction is a lot of movement when your opponent yeah. plays, like, heavy calf lists or, like, really, yeah, mobile lists that makes you really think. Or also the activation disadvantage the activation, makes, uh, activation disadvantage disadvantage is, is, yeah. uh, is a huge problem yeah exactly so the, the that that's basically the nemesis for for Baratheons. so um yeah let's see um before we start in there were basically like at least in my book we had two or i, I was hoping for it especially two things to get changed and the first one we got with no no spoiler but I was really hoping for Andrew Estemont and I was hoping for Stannis III, so the Calf Commander. I was hoping yeah. to get to see something out of it. Um, we got a little bit of it, but uh, before we jump in, we start with general changes or faction-wide changes. So this one is like a little bit in between because the lances got changed, as we all know. So the lance is basically lack a die now. So you can only go up only go up to nine dice when you when you when you charge an enemy. All the rest stays the same. The riders of the High Garden used to be, and they still are, uh, a unit um, which brings the advantage of a, of a, of lances and to have this huge um, 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 threat that they that they put out on a flank, for example, or to finish an enemy when they charge in. 
Um, but now they also got this lance change, uh, as all lance calves. But all the other lance calves are like heavy lance calves, like the Tully calf, the uh, Knights of Castle Rock, and all those. So they are quite different. They are eight point units. They have strong defense. They have like a, a lot of morale, right? So the Riders of High Garden stay stayed in this um, niche of being. A, I don't want to say support piece, but they are a highly a cheap finishing piece. A cheap finishing piece, piece, and and also and also a lot of times you see Baratheon players just parking them on an objective until they can really co contribute to the to the table or that uh, until they can finish something off, right? And, and exactly, and until then they just score. So the change here is they also lack the die, but they gain plus one to hit. Um, when charging and this one is big right because it br brings them to three as the other eight point lances and also when you combine that with ours as the fury you can go up to hitting on twos if you if yes. you if if you need to right which is quite impressive for a six point unit so what do you mm -hmm. make of the change uh pasha like like what how do you see them in s5 what where where are, are they off the table now are they still a viable choice where do you see them? So um, regarding that they're only on Randy's side, um, there's they yeah. are still in a good spot on Randy's side. Mm -hmm. um, you still have to use them very carefully. They are um, the the choice if you need a finishing unit. Um, the change to plus three to hit actually is a slight buff uh, depending on the situa situations. If you don't have rerolls, hitting on a plus three is definitely better than hitting on plus four. Yeah. Even if you lack one dice in comparison. So um, one unit will be uh, in most Renly's, in most armies of, on Renly's side. Yeah. As the key finisher role, um, first parking, then jumping in if, uh, need be, uh, if needs be. Um, so the role doesn't really change mm. and uh, we'll st they will st still see a lot of play. Yeah. A lot of times when I played them, I saw the the biggest threat for them wasn't really being hit by something like defensive wise. It was more like getting receiving some kind of like long long range long range panic damage. Actually, right, mm -hmm. right. With the six morale, you can easily bring them to seven, maybe eight. Right, Lannisters can mm -hmm. do it quite easily and damage them in the course of the game. And as soon as they right drop drop one more rank. Um, the, the, the power uh, the, loss is huge. The power but loss is Randy's, huge. So. Uh, Randy has more than enough uh, heal. Yeah, healing that, that's, possibilities. that's true. That's true. So, I'm, I'm still no expert with Riders of High Garden. Um, uh, so, so, so my biggest weakness is using them as the real finisher. Mm. Uh, in, it, every time I play them, they mostly get stuck somewhere and die <laughs> into a block. Ah, let's, so let's, they s let's charge this. We finish mm. it up. Doesn't work. Shit. Now they're dead. Okay. Okay, got it. So stuck in, in like, 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 like they get stuck in, 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 um, in melee. You mean, right? So, yes. so okay, uh, yeah. In my last match, it was the champions of the stack. I even tried no, to double, to double uh, mm. the oh, well. two rounds of high guard, and they still couldn't finish. One mm. in the front, one in the flank, and the champions still stood there like, yo, yo, doesn't matter. Yeah, and they hit back like a truck. Yeah, on, uh, especially if you have no armor. Yeah, that's the role. I mean, champions of the sack. Yeah. That's the role, right? To park in the middle and being this tank and hitting back, like or doing like they do not spike damage, but they do like constantly damage yeah. you in the course of the game and do not get enough um, damage back, right? So yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's on the general changes. We're leaving out Boisterous Charisma because we covered it in in other videos before, and for the Baratheon faction, it does not really really make a difference for um what is it uh stan uh, uh Renly Renly two. two Renly two so it does not really change his pick rate it uh, that at least that's what we think it won't really hurt him what he's trying to do or achieve so we will leave it at the lances so let's go to this um one particular um tactics cards we want to uh, or tactics card we want to discuss um there were actually three changes but we will only cover tactical approach since it's the most um impactful one important important one the other one is on regroup and reform which is just a quality change and the the the, the second one was on um 
inexplicable return. Yeah, exactly. Which 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 only got more usable because it got you know it's more it, you, you can you pretty can much it easy. yeah you can recycle and get other cards which are more important which is a which is a fine change for the card but tactical approach really 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 changes something right um, so Stannis one always had this. That um, as soon as start of any round, you pull tactical approach. As soon as you put this card to a unit, you would roll a D3. And whatever you roll got added to the wounds you do when you do a melee attack. Right? So, um, and if it's Stannis um, unit, it was flat three. So they basically removed the randomness out of it. They removed the die completely. And now when you attach it to a unit, it makes plus one die. When you attach it to Stannis unit, it's two dies, right? So how do you see the change? What does it do to Stannis one slash the Stannis side of the Brathens? Uh, so as a it will definitely hurt Stannis one's pick rate. Mm. Um, I, I think he was mostly uh, picked because of this card. Yeah, it's not the strongest card, but it, it is, it, it's uh, his most obvious card. How to use it? Yeah. So you just uh, pick it on Stannis. You dish out tokens like crazy, and you know, push him in, deal damage, do uh, do what you have to do. Yeah. So um, toning down his damage, but still having to expand one condition token, seems like a steep price. If you uh, compare uh, a tactics card to uh, some uh, to another uh, unit that got changed, where similar stuff, or, uh, not not exactly plus damage, but plus utility, is baseline. If the uh, enemy only has a, uh, as a panic die, uh, as a uh, condition mm. token, for yeah, example. Yeah, yeah. Now, now you have to you have to spend resource that you, that probably deals more damage than just a D two mm. or just to uh, just two wounds or one wound or wound on any other unit for a potential damage, which uh, I, I don't know. Also, mm. They could have changed it slightly better or try, or just tune down the damage to plus one mm. and remove the uh, costs for it. So you had, yeah. that you have to uh, remove a condition token. Just say, if the condition token is there, deal plus one damage, fine. Yeah. It removes the power spike, but... Uh, which is good. Uh, yeah, yeah, it remo yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. But... Um, uh, it doesn't uh, remove the utility of the tokens you can dish out. True. Um, I might. I might be a little bit. I, I. I. I actually do not know if it really, really hurts the pick rate, because I. You know, when I play Stennis. Um, so. So. Like that. That being said, his attachment is quite good, right? Because yes. like of of mark target is great. Um, and changing this out to a weaken or whatever you need is is big too, right? Yes. So his attachment is great. So and his three cards. So we just talked about tactical approach, which is a little bit less now, but still, Stannis one has the opportunity with harsh conditions to shut down abilities, right? Yeah. And this can be. And that is the strongest really, card. Yeah, and that's his strongest card because you said this tactical approach is probably the most obvious. Like when you do not, when you're not talking to like the most experienced players when someone picks up Baratheons they will talk they will as soon as they you know pick up decks and see tactical approach it will be like a like a really um appealing card to put yeah. into uh, put into your deck it's so easy hard, to use you just e have to have exactly. it without a round and then so, um, it plays by itself it, it exactly but actually will of the one true king is pretty easy to pull off especially you want to go to crown right yeah. and then put three tokens out especially in that and then to get with tactical approach harsh conditions so this commander is still in my book really 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 well rounded and and plays Definitely. on on the same level as stannis 2 for example which is also a really rounded well or fine uh well designed commander right yeah um yeah so i i, I what i really appreciate is the reduce the damage spike and put it back to a like a normal or like a more more normal kind of play experience what i really appreciate about mm -hmm. this how the developers take cards and and try to tune them down uh sometimes in small steps but i appreciate this about to bring balance to the game um yeah yeah, yeah so that's actually on stannis one um yeah so i think uh, while we're talking commanders there were also some 
commander changes. And I or, I already talked about the first one. So I was really hoping for Andrew Estemont. And before I let you go, Andrew Estemont was so highly anticipated, I guess, because he 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 is perceived as the one of the worst commanders in the Brathian portfolio. It has a wall. Because a Yeah. But but he's like like he's not 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 really taken because and I think the 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 main reason is because he is um, the the stereotype of an aggressive commander trying to you know to do assault orders to charge in to kill something which does not really fuel with the base deck of the Baratheons and not yeah. if in in their in their play style so you so so you can't really make. Even though, like you, you, you can combine all, all the stuff, and it does not fuel your general playstyle. So with this one, you really have to go go hunting, right? Um, so this is, I guess, why I was really hoping for some changes on him, and we got some. And um, yeah, Pasha, guide us through uh, first of the king's men. So first of the king's men got changed or got an additional um, ability that if you. If your enemy doesn't control crown or letters, not and letters, it's uh, either zone, uh, you can roll uh, re-roll moral tests on this uh, unit. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't seem that impactful, but uh, in my recent match, uh, I actually had quite a few triggers for it because um, on uh, as, uh, as you prog progress the game, uh, in most start of rounds, you will probably pick swords or your enemy will pick swords or heal something but uh, letters is mostly the second or third choice each game round. And uh, crown, one of the last uh, choices yeah. ever. And uh, you can easily set the uh, set this ability up to uh, always be triggerable. Yeah. And um, with uh, Lightbringers uh, and shooting into melee, you will always have the rerolls. And you're sure to actually use your defensive cards like Baratheon Conviction. So you can um, you can have a better setup for your tactics cards. You can push Andrew in with assault orders, rush of aggression, put him into two units at the same time, and still be able to heal off uh, with uh, breathing conviction while, uh, while you have the the uh, safiness uh, safe, you know, safiness from um, first of the Kingsmen to pass your ten panic tests. Yeah. Or and the most important part to the last. Yeah. Because Obviously. it's a moral test, yep. and you can actually yep. reroll it. Mm -hmm. uh, so the chance that kings, uh, king, uh, kingsmen, and Andrew survive, or queensmen and Andrew, is a lot higher, uh, mm -hmm. thanks to first of the kingsmen. Yeah. Yeah. So a good change. Is it enough? Can you say that? Is it is it uh, enough change to, to 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 bring him on the table? Is it enough? Uh, I don't think so. But I guess mm -hmm. it's just that he isn't that uh, famous. Also, I guess it's mostly a choice of uh, who's Andrew Estemont. Uh, mm. He was maybe one page in, in the books, and so just uh, gets, gets uh, disregarded for his role in the books yeah. and uh, gets overlooked. But yeah. I guess right now you could say, except one tactics card where we'll come later to, he's in he's in a good spot. He's yeah. not overwhelming, mm. yeah, but, but he's not uh, definitely not uh, any uh, not underwhelming anymore. Yeah, maybe slight changes, maybe a little bit uh, here and there uh, to push him a little bit more. True conviction uh, could be changed to something else. Yeah. Because uh, you, if you put him into Kingsman, you mostly have rerolls, and you don't need rerolls if you have lower ranks. True. True. So, um, but maybe I can't think of anything right now that would actually benefit him. Uh, that isn't isn't too much in comparison to yeah. true conviction. Yeah, maybe maybe as we just talked about, like slightly changing the game over time in like half year, like right frequency of changing. Maybe his tactics cards can be a thing because his tactics cards, and we talked about this before, um, and I'm 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 talking about reckless fury. Like all yeah. like all commanders, um, aggressive commanders have like um, or most of them have assault orders. Have yes. some kind of card where they hit quite hard, but there is a drawback, like wounds or hits back or something, right? Or the or you mm -hmm. receive uh, two two tokens, 
something. So there is a drawback. And the third one is either uh, additional movement or a good charge, right? Or an auto charge or something, or overrun or something. So, some kind of auto charge or overrun. Exactly. So some kind of some kind of movement. So now let's talk about Reckless Fury. And Reckless Fury is a card which which if they would have changed Reckless Fury in season five now to a better card. So when you just compare the two, and you can guide us through quickly, um, that could have helped Andrew Estemont quite well. We think. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, regarding Reckless Fury, you get Vicious and Highest Attack die with the downside that you suffer wounds um, regarding uh, not missing ranks. So if you're at four ranks, you only get the benefit of Vicious, but suffer two wounds, that miss, which is a huge drawback for a tactics card. So you won't, uh, you sure. won't, um, so uh, you don't want to play it if you're four ranks, mm. which you optimally are on the first charge. So in the first uh, two to three rounds, this is a dead card in most cases. So uh, comparing it to something like Price of Failure, you can always play it. You get the value of uh, always hitting your hits if you need them. But probably if you if the enemy unit doesn't die, it, uh, you get panicked and uh, vulnerable. Panic is uh, um, uh, not that important on uh, Andrew. Or yeah. wouldn't that uh, wouldn't be that important thanks mm. to first of the Kingsmen. But uh, Reckless Fury is only a card that you want uh, to use on last rank to get the, the real benefit of yep. it, while other cards like uh, Price of Failure, you can always play and get the benefit with a slight drawback if you are not in the right situa in the situation. True, true. So as, yeah, as you say, it's it's a pretty situational card, while, while other cards on command, like those kind of aggressive commanders, are quite universally yeah. usable, right? So that could be, you know, if the developers hear us, that would be something that p would push him a little bit more on the table and yep. which is not like a huge like a huge step for him but it will it will push him a little bit more to being on par with yep. the other aggressive commanders and, and Baratheons have the problem that they already have some cards that are on the same trigger and that are definitely big, uh, better like ours with the fury is the obvious choice yes uh, to get all the, the benefits of the card no yep. vicious sundering and uh, plus one to hit mm. and the second would be sustained assault Mm. Which, which gets you highest detector and reroll. So uh, Reckless Fury is always in the spot like, yeah, I have ours is the Fury, which is better than this card. And I have sustained assault. That's, that's, that nearly does the same and is still better than this card. So why should yeah. I play this card? Yeah, yeah. If I have yeah. the better choices in my deck that I actually want to reach faster. Yeah. True. Yeah, so that's on Andrew. Uh, I guess a more, uh, the, or the most prominent commander change at least on the Brathians was uh, Davos right and Davos um, so the change seems little because it's just Davos ignores the usual attachment limits um, and that opens up so it seems little but it opens up quite a big amount of like things to try out to put yep. certain attachments into him in my book, he was always um, kind of a weird commander. And to remind everyone, he takes out Final Strike, one of the strongest cards in the Baratheon deck, and brings in four cards because he's like like the Targaryens do, and um, brings brings kind of like control movement shenanigan cards to the table um, or into play, which seems a little bit weird at first. But we both tried Davos and our nice community, like like uh, very very good or like uh, he can play really nicely with him. Um, is uh, uh, Vampis? He he's playing he's playing that that commander to to the limit, man. So there is quite some interesting stuff you can do with him. So maybe yeah. maybe maybe you can you can um, um, tell us about your experience with the S five Davos now. Uh, I'm, I'm, as of now, I don't have that much experience with Davos, but uh, this will definitely change for a, a future yeah. upcoming tournament. I don't want to spoil anything, hmm. uh, so that my enemies won't won't be prepared which uh, tournament it will be. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess um, uh, if you look at the change, it's still only slightly, but it opens uh, up a huge possibilities yeah. on list building with him. And if you're looking into um, the special formats that um, Simon proposes. Uh, he's actually built for the, for for this. Banners and butchery. So you have mean? the additional four points for attachments. Uh, that's the, that's a format where he really shines. Mm. Okay. 
But and, 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 and I feel like he's actually one of the better commanders out there, um, even if he loses um, final strike. Yep. But uh, flea bottom tri tricks is definitely a very good card. Yeah, and he has a um, very um, well-rounded tactics design yeah. deck. It's everything uh, in there. Yeah, tactics deck. Yeah. Now you have healing. You have to way you you have a way to use this extra mm -hmm. healing. Mm -hmm. And for me, the worst card would only be parlay, which is very yeah. situational to play and True. really hard to pull off. Mm -hmm. uh, because in most cases you have uh, that was in a very strong unit where you don't want to miss out on the activation. True. True, but I have to say, what I really like about Davos is that you can you can use them in both. I've seen both both strategies happening uh, quite often. So either he plays a really defensive kind of thing, and it just spawns r actually right before you with something which is basically unkillable. So like no. Queensman, like Queensman, or you see him in Kingsman, and char charging forward, right? So and yeah. outflanking and so killing something, right? So. And you can do both, and that's what I really appreciate about the commander. Um, so maybe we can we can jump to the to the to the to the list um, we prepared for this video. Um, and that's actually a case where we make use of this attachment limit, which is not there anymore. So you can you know throw in and Ramsey. Everyone knows Ramsey, quite a quite probably one of probably the best two point attachment. Or yeah, at least definitely. one of at least at least top three. Um, so he's in there. Top so you two. can yeah. So you can play quite 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 a bit. And now here you have a quite aggressive list with Davos in Kingsman, right? So guide us yeah. through the list, um, Pascal. So um, the focus on this, on this list, as on, on my the idea behind this list, is to uh, make use of Dale as the second uh, possible uh, as a second Davos to uh, make use of his tactics card mm -hmm. cards. But uh, everything else is uh, um, is designed around the strengths of uh, Davos and pushing these strengths even more forward. So uh, Davos uh, gives Pathfinder. And with Ramsey and Reek, you actually, in Kingsman, you have a unit that you uh, safely can push into the middle that can hold its own, thanks to Ramsey and Reek and Fueled by Slaughter. Mm -hmm. You can push this even more, thanks to the panic tokens from uh, Reek or extra florent or dish out vulnerable tokens if you need them and um, to use 30 of the crown more um, uh, uh, to actually use more uh, 30 to the crown you have uh, Melisandre for the additional wishes on Kingsman if you need it or if you're uh, in a situation where you're like first uh, first round first the uh, first player you can um, put uh, Melisandre on swords use her effect to give wishes to the Kingsman deal yourself some damage to uh, get the potential damage somewhere where you need it, and then attack uh, uh, through the through the swords to heal the damage that you that you You're got mm -hmm. that either through uh, the fueled by slaughter or fell to the crown or to shift that healing that you receive through uh, fueled by slaughter with um, what is it regroup and reform is it not it's everything it's everything everything the yeah mm -hmm. to, the heal to, card to actually yeah. heal a unit yeah. somewhere yeah. else on the battlefield because everything has the has an, has no limitations regarding range. Like regroup and reform, that is only in short, uh, long range, and everything you can actually heal uh, from the other side of the map if you think offlink is the best move that you can do. True, that's a common thing for for Davos since uh, flea bottom tricks is also there is no range limit. They can just yeah. push. They can just let he 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 can just let like 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 march his unit anywhere. And if you play Dale and have like two Davoses on the field, uh, you can just march them up somewhere, right? Uh, yeah. Which yeah, so it's a common thing for him. Yeah. Um, one question I had when, or actually I had two questions when we fir when I first seen the the list. The first one was, um, my initial feeling was to change Dale to, and and I totally feel using the tactics cards on two units, but I I, I still felt that Braun might be the better choice for the Lightbringers. Um, how do you see this? Uh, Bron is definitely uh, on paper at first a better choice mm -hmm. because he gives uh, a, a higher damage output. You can easily use this with Crescent and Melisandre if you're first player. Yeah, and uh, it's uh, one of my uh, 
also he's my go-to attachment in Lightroom yep. as in my other uh, in, mainly in other lists. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. my Spanish one uh, OTK list. He's he's safely set into Nightbringers just to yep. use this power spike that I can get from double activations with uh, Crescent and Melisandre. Yeah, to dish out three panic tests and two attacks, and uh, still have them on three plus armor, which is uh, really strong. So definitely a good choice, but I want in, in this uh, list I really want to focus on Davos as a, car, as, a as a commander and his um, tactics card, and Dale needs to see some play. Yeah, Counter Strike isn't the best ability. Obviously, but... obviously, I just you know I, I I I always love making when we build lists that makes use of something that is not played that or played that often or so intensively. So I really like that to to see him on the table. Um, the second question I got oh. was, um, oh, I, I've seen, um, I actually, uh, asked Pasha uh, on this, um, this list in my, in my view lacks a little bit of defensive power because he's pushing, pushing up the Kingsman somewhere, like let's say in throughout flank or through the middle. So, um, so you're back. Uh, I was asking yeah. like. I was when I saw the list. I was thinking a little bit: is there de enough defensive power to hold a flank, for example? So let's just say you push the Kingsmen up the middle, or you have them somewhere, right? The Crownland Scouts are pretty fragile. The Dragonstone Noble is not is not fragile, but he can be killed also. Like if if you know if if your opponent does the right things and threaten one of your flanks, the Lightbringers, the Dragonstone Noble, or nor the Crownland Scouts will probably hold up. Um, so that was my second question on the list. Yeah, sh sure, that is right. But uh, for that, you either have everything, mm. 32 a crown to, uh, hold, uh, so mm. to hold the line mm. while you're still uh, dealing with your main threat, <laughs> yeah. with the Kingsmen, yeah. and, um, or three bottom tactics if you're, uh, if you're actually free just to move there, make the counter charge, kill the unit that threatens your other units. Mm. And plus fire ammo isn't that bad. Uh, as most yeah. units won't True. fall uh, in one attack, definitely, uh, and may need up to two to three attacks just to be um, bogged down. Yeah, got it. True. And uh, yeah, you can easily um, protect uh, with Forest, uh, for example, the Dragstone mm. uh, Noble. Yeah, true, true, true. Okay, so that's on the list. So try it out. These are our season five tryouts uh, to to now test that that sees that or that saw some change. So you might so so you might try it out. And if you try that out, you need some guidance. You want to talk about it? Just jump on the Discord and talk to Pasha or myself or, or the other great Brathian players out there who can guide you through uh, this list, other lists, other options. Um, so that brings us to the end of the video and uh, also our like. I don't know, few um, last sentences on where will Baratheons be in season five? What will we see? Will we see more Davos? Will we see like, you know, what? what's your view on it? So um, regarding their standing as a faction as a whole, I still feel like they're a top four contender, mm -hmm. um, but they won't be able to hold the first place anymore since uh, other factions like Mattel got a huge uh, buff and um, every mo uh, so you still have to play into Baratheon's play style to, to be able to beat the enemy mm. and we, we, we will definitely uh, see more Davos and more Andrew just to get uh, familiar with the changes but uh, as a whole Stannis OTK and Stannis uh, 1 will still be the prominent commanders yep. for the side. Probably, Axel yeah. will still be, uh, Axel himself um, will still sit at the bottom with probably Andrew fo followed mm -hmm. as a commander on, uh, on Stannis side. And the changes for uh, Randy's side don't impact the commander choices uh, that much. Mm -hmm. All right. So great for the summary. And um, as we uh, end the video, I want to say thanks again to all the Patreons that, you know, contribute so much to the work we do that, you know, gives us all the energy and pays us forward to to drive the best uh, uh, content p uh, possible we, we, we can do. And uh, that also, all these Patreons also made us... Um, or made it happen that we were, were able to to build our own Playmat with Playmat's EU. 
So um, this these these tech the, these these playmats have all the deployment zones and objective cards and a nice tactics board which gives which 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 gives you all the options you need in terms of like discard pile and 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 drawback and victory points and your NCUs and everything has its place right there. So definitely check it out down in the um, down in the description below. I will link it there. So thanks Patreons again to make this happen. And if you want to support, it was a pleasure to be here. Uh, it won't be the last time, Pascal. It won't no, be the I last so. time. <laughs> All right. So until we meet again, guys, as always, roll those crits. Come for the hits and stay for the crits.